same thing and see how I feel. All right, guys. Well, just a couple things before we get going. Um, the Valleys will send out the preseason poll tomorrow. Um, if there's any way that I can help in your coverage of the Salukis, just please let me know. My email address and uh, cell phone number are on in the quick fact sheet. It's over on that table. Um, and we're looking forward to the start of basketball season. Without further ado, here's seventh year head coach Cindy Stein. How's everybody doing? Afternoon. I um, apologize about the cup. I have a little cold. I haven't had a cold, cold in about three years. And uh, I have one today. So um, I don't know. I feel like it's a nice, sexy throat, <laughs> you know? So maybe that'll get us more fans this year. Uh, that's our hope. Um, we appreciate y'all taking time to be here today. Uh, we're really excited about the season. Um, can't uh, say enough about, um, you know, just being able to get out there and actually play somebody. Um, I think that's going to be so important for us. Um, after last year, I mean, I, I think that I've said this probably a million times, and I'm trying not to say it too much because I don't want our players to think along those lines because I was so very disappointed about our season uh, because I felt like we were doing so many great things to get us where we were consistently marching to uh, the top of the Missouri Valley and felt like we had a little bit of a down year. Um, so with that being said, you know, I took that as um, every year I evaluate our program, every facet of it. Uh, what I did last year, I basically I did a deep dive um, into what we were doing, how we can get better, and really uh, looked upon myself uh, and our coaching staff of how we can help our kids be better um, and I feel like we're doing an outstanding job. But I looked at it too, it's like, you know, academically our kids are doing outstanding. We're kicking butt in the classroom, you know. We're community service, we're kicking butt. You know, graduation, we're kicking butt. You know, we finished 11th in the nation um, as a team in our GPA for the WBCA poll, uh, which is outstanding, a great honor for our program. Um, so there's a lot of great positives and our kids are working hard in a lot of areas. Um, but we also wanted to make sure, you know, what did we want to get better at in basketball? Um, and that's where we looked at, um, you know, I wanted to, uh, I looked at our fundamentals. I felt like we had too many turnovers. Uh, we needed to be a, a, you know, bigger stickler to the fundamentals. Um, I listened to our uh, baseball coach on his interview, and I loved what he talked about uh, mastering the simple play. Um, that's absolutely, we've got to do a better job of doing that uh, this year. Um, we've got to be tougher defensively. Um, you know, we've been really stressing defense the last couple years, um, but we've got to be tougher. I feel like we are. Um, we've got to take care of the ball, as I said. Uh, way too many turnovers. I think we averaged 15 turnovers last year. Uh, way too many. I'd like to get that between 10, 11, um, 12 for sure. Um, and under. Um, I want us to rec uh, run the court hard every single possession. Um, and I felt like that dropped off a little bit when our depth uh, wasn't quite what we wanted it to be. I think that won't be a problem this year. I feel like our depth is outstanding. Um, our team chem chemistry and our team concepts, I wanted to make sure that we looked at those things and how can we work better collectively because I felt like we had great individual talent, um, but we've got to work better as a team. Our team concepts and how we move uh, with uh, on the court has to be more as a team. Um, so one of the things we did, we uh, had them read a book this summer uh, called Chop Wood, Carry Water uh, by Joshua Metcalf. A lot of the things that we took out of that which was important was what our kids actually got out of it. Uh, because we can, as coaches, preach all day long of what we want our kids to understand and what they need to do, but they needed to grasp. And so we took some of the things that they were grasping and we talked about it and how can we get better in those areas. Um, so those were things. But some of the things that stood out in that book that I really took to heart was uh, you can't cheat the process. Um, you gotta be a stickler to the fundamentals. Um, under pressure, you don't rise to the occasion. You sink to the level of your training. That was something that hit home with me because I'm like, that's me. I've got to make sure that they are trained. I've got to make sure that they're doing everything that they can. I've got to put them in pressure situations um, and being comfortable with the uncomfortable. You know, we all like to do things that uh, we're real comfortable with. Um, our kids want to know what practice is like every day. We don't tell them. Sometimes we uh, 
stick the hardest drills in the beginning where they used to be maybe maybe towards the middle last year um, we're just mixing things up so we're trying to do a lot of different things our spring uh, workouts were tough uh, then they got home for about three weeks and they came back for the summer and our summer was tougher than the spring um, and then they got home for another two and a half three weeks and then we started here in the fall and we've been pretty tough on them as far as just the intensity of every single day um, but also making sure that we have good things that we're doing for their recovery process uh, so we're not overworking them and honestly when you only have eight hours I never feel like we're overworking them uh, until you get to that 20 hours and then we got to pay attention to that um, so we did those things our goal is always to win the Missouri Valley Championship I mean that should not even we shouldn't even have to say that anymore that's always going to be our goal every single year but what we are going to concentrate on is getting better every day and when we can concentrate on that and just getting better every day and making sure we're showing up every day that's when we're going to really succeed and that's what we're concentrating on um, players that I think have been very impressive uh, so far uh, Nicole Martin hardest work ethic of anybody we got on the team I mean she's in here nonstop. she is always in the gym um, that is something that uh, you, you know she's first team off conference uh, and there's a reason for it um, so you know she's someone that we rely on heavily um, as I told one of our recruits coming in the other day I'm like playing with someone like Nicole Martin is a uh, is a highlight for any guard because you basically can throw the ball anywhere and she's gonna go get it um, and then she scores with it which is outstanding uh, Mackenzie Sylvie another young lady that's having a really good uh, fall um, shooting the ball well um, I like that she's using her length defensively. Um, we still got to get her to play defense all the time, but she's going to be really good uh, defensively. I think she can cause a lot of problems defensively. Um, Abby Brockmeyer, I just told Abby the other day, probably one of the most solid players um, every single day. You can always count on her to know what she's doing, um, hit the boards hard, um, help her teammates out, just very very solid she's actually moved out to the wing a little bit more had more reps there I don't know if we'll put her there um, too much but you know her versatility of being able to know all the plays at all the spots um, has really been uh, helpful for us because our depth is much much better and then we have two newcomers that uh, I feel uh, um, are gonna play a lot of minutes um, and that's Awa Kita, a junior college transfer from Cochise uh, junior college and, um, you know, I've s s said from day one, the first time I saw her play, um, I was sitting in the uh, gym in Arizona, and she didn't let their point guard come up the floor four straight possessions. She basically stole the ball from her every single time and laid it in. And then one of the shooting guards on the other team got hot. Her coach put her on that shooting guard. That kid didn't even get to touch the ball again the entire quarter so um, someone that definitely I think you're gonna see uh, a lot of great things out of her uh, because she can change a game defensively which when we're trying to get tougher defensively I think she helps with that um, and our kids love playing with her uh, because they know that uh, we always have a chance obviously uh, when she's protecting the basket as well and she can guard any position which uh, as a coach you absolutely love that the other one is our transfer that came last year that can play this year, and that is Gabby Walker uh, from Lindenwood. Um, another young lady that's uh, very physical, rebounder, physical, player down low. Um, you know, when you talk to your team about toughness, it's being able to play physical. Uh, she definitely fits that mold, um, doing a fantastic job for us. So, two kids that I really feel like you're going to really find exciting to play. Um, our schedule. Um, I think our schedule's tough because when I look at it, we have so many regional rivals on that schedule. And regional rivals, it doesn't really matter if they're ranked, not ranked. When you're playing teams that you're going head to head with and recruiting all the time, um, you know, it becomes a pretty intense game. So, you know, when we look at SIU Edwardsville, um, St. Louis, SEMO, UT Martin, Murray State, those are all teams that, uh, you know, are, are really good solid regional rivals um, you look at we have a compass challenge 
which is held up at DeKalb, Illinois this year. And that's your in-state rivalries. You know, so we've got Eastern Illinois, Northern Illinois, and Western Illinois. So again, it's just, um, I love the fact that we are doing rivalry games so much because that's the competition part that you've got to have out of your kids. You cannot take a game off. Um, and then we've got teams like Memphis, who has a nationally ranked recruiting class this year. Um, I saw a picture of one of their kids on their media board, and, and uh, I think I could put three of our kids together to fit inside of her. And uh, she's still bigger than they are. Um, as kid, and I'm like, I don't know what where she's playing. I'm assuming down low. Um, we're already we got to figure something out for her right away. Um, St. Louis being Atlantic 10 uh, conference opponent. I mean, obviously they're always tough. Um, IUPUI 20 wins went to the WNIT last year. Uh, they'll be a tough opponent as will Tennessee Tech, who is another team. Uh, with 20 wins. So I feel like our preparation going into this is, you know, as we talked about, um, our depth is a lot better. Um, you're going to see substitutions uh, a lot quicker probably. Um, that's kind of what we've been working on in practice is everybody going as hard as you can for a good three, four minutes and, and subs come in and uh, we might platoon a couple times. It might be two, three at a time. Uh, but our kids are going to get up and down the floor. Um, and I think you're going to be excited about uh, that kind of style. And um, we'll go from there. So I'll open it up for questions. So Walker is a transfer from where? Lindenwood. You, you, you have a, your core is primarily upperclassmen. Have they responded as well as you would hope from the tougher offseason? Yeah, I think that uh, they struggled initially. I mean, I'll admit, I think they struggled initially. You know, uh, this, uh, the student athletes today, they want to be very comfortable in what they do. They want to know what you're doing, if it's going to be hard, how many, how long. Um, you know, we basically told them that, you know, you're not going to know what's going to happen in a game. So we just tried to apply that to our game situations. Um, and they've gotten a lot more used to that. Um, are they quite where I'd like them to be right now? You know, some days we are, some days we're not. Um, but we're training them hard, and I think they're they're understanding our concepts uh, a lot better. And I think that uh, they would be able to validate that with you know what we're emphasizing. Um, and I think they all want to play. And I think that's the thing that they've seen the most is our competition and practice is pretty intense uh, because you know we could put five kids on one team and the other team would just know that they're going to just get killed. And that doesn't happen this year. It's like any team can win uh, because you've got a great nucleus on each team. And it's hard to, to sometimes figure out, um, you know, who are the five best because it's not just five. You know, and I think that's a great problem to have. Well, um, who will be your toughest conference opponent? Is it the usual suspects in Iowa? One thing I would say about the Missouri Valley Conference this year is I think this is probably the best it has been from top to bottom. I think every single program has gotten better. Um, I think Drake's always good. Missouri State, uh, you know, returns everybody but one player. Um, Northern Iowa is always solid. So um, I think there's a bunch of us that return almost the entire team. So it's going to be a pretty intense uh, conference schedule. Coach, you talked about the fact that Well, I like the best of just they're, they're constantly playing. Um, you know, we've had to really work on uh, our sprint in the floor, our change of direction, you know, off a rebound quick, getting the ball out quick. I see us getting up the floor better. Uh, we're executing a little bit more in our secondary. Uh, we're getting a rim runner um, a lot more consistently. Uh, we're able to make that pass better. Um, making better decisions and then I think that those are all real solids and then defensively I just feel as though they just have such a better idea of what they're supposed to be doing and and where we want to be um, and how they have to work together I think just those team concepts um, in general are probably a, a lot more solid in their heads right now last year when, when you got in foul trouble you said you had substitutions last night your scoring your drive on offense was one that you that you brought in off the bench uh, is, is that going to get picked up this year by the transfers? Are the, are the younger kids better offensively and contributing more this year? Too? 
Yeah, I would tell you you're going to see, you know, Peyton McAllister, for instance, has been shooting extremely well. Caitlin Link's been shooting really well. Um, so I think that they're going to also be improved. Uh, but I will um, – we, we talk about this as coaches. Our inside game is excellent. And so we, we really want to make sure that uh, – we, we give those four or five, actually, as many touches as we can. And we talk about that a lot because they're really good. And they work a lot really well together. You improve depth at forward? Absolutely. Depth yes. Yeah, our depth inside, you know, Gabby is able to come in for a Nicole now and give you scoring. Or I think that's what we said before is that sometimes we didn't have a five come in and score for us last year. If Nicole was out, we struggled there. I don't think that you will see that this year. Could you see uh, Awa playing with Gabby, playing like the three forwards at, at times if Abby's a forward player? We possibly could do that. I think we have a lot of flexibility to do that. We've tinkered with the big lineup, um, honestly, with McKenzie playing point. So, I mean, just having a bunch of bigs in there, depending on who you're playing. Um, I don't know how long we would be able to sustain that, but, you know, there's a, there are some good options. Um, Awa actually played outside more last year at junior college, where we have her playing the four spot for us, which is a high-low. Um, but she could actually, once she learns the system better, I feel like we could move her out uh, a little bit more to the wing. Uh, but right now, she's just still trying to gather everything. We want her instinctive, because that's when she plays best. So we've kind of kept it, her locked in on that spot right now. Well, you know, it's funny because we work on different things that we do at free throws, and uh, it's it's actually been a good irritant is that we keep making them, <laughs> you know, because we'll do certain things off the misses, and uh, we've actually been shooting the, the ball pretty well from the free throw line. So um, we uh, they knew from the summer that free throws were going to be important. I think they've really paid attention. I think also just having a maturity to them, there's just a lot more confidence in this group. And I think when you can have kids that are confident, you, you can do anything. When uh, Brittany's not in the game, who's going to come in behind her and handle the ball? Well, I think that obviously Caitlin Link um, would be able to replace Brittany pretty well. I think she's just a lot more mature, has a better idea. Chris Nelson's always a great option. Um, that's one thing that we like in our players is the versatility. Um, Britt does such a solid job there, but. Uh, you know, actually, Caitlin Link's probably a lot more of a vocal leader um, out there. Um, but uh, I feel like we have three great options there. With the uh, significant changes you made, do you think you'll start fast at any time? You know, um, I'll probably have a better idea after this week, um, the next two weeks. Um, I think that, uh, you know, us being able to play – um, scrimmage wise a little bit more uh, we'll have a better feel for that I ho would hope we'd start better I mean I think that that was always something that we struggled with last year um, the way we've started practices is pretty intense and we have to be ready to go from the get go so we're hoping that carries over until you play a game you don't know um, but that's our hope that's why we've designed practices to be uh, you know, where sometimes we're doing an, an all-out full-court drill um, that they have to be ready for, and they got to hit a certain number at or compete at uh, to help get that kind of feel. Uh, that's depth. So you, know, you talked about playing eight, and you talked about playing more than ten. Can that sustain itself over the course of the year? Well, I would tell you the golden plan is to try to play ten. And right now, there's a chance of 11. So, um, you know, it, you never know when injuries come into play or anything like that. But, you know, honestly, as a staff, we've kind of talked about being really committed to, you know, have playing as many kids as we can so that we could play a high intensity um, for a long period of time. Um, I yeah, absolutely. I I would admit, I would tell you just from my standpoint, I've never actually had that kind of depth before. Um, so from my thinking, it's hard because 
if someone's playing really well, I'm going to have a hard time pulling them. Um, but I do want them to play at a high capacity. So um, we're going to have to we're going to experiment with it early. I feel like we could go nine really well and easily, um, and then ten and eleven sometimes, depending on if they're playing. But I think that when you we could probably get everybody in fairly well early and see how they do. And I think we'll the third and fourth quarter will be we'll stick to specific lineups. Um, but we still want to get everybody's feet wet. And I think in the long run that will help us when we get to the end of the season because I think we'll be fresher. Then is it really important who starts? No, it isn't important. I know I talk to our kids all the time about that, you know, because they'll want, am I going to start? You know, and we've had that discussion this week, at, actually. And, you know, I'm like, I think everyone's going to play. I mean, out of that 10, I can't say – all 14 are going to play. Perhaps you'd want to be one of the five in the in last five minutes of the game. Well, I think what – you, know, uh, you know, one of the discussions I had in postseason uh, was I talked to Kelly Harper, who's now at Tennessee, and how – because she actually played ten kids consistently all year long, and obviously they got to the Sweet 16, and asked how she did some of that. Uh, because I felt like we were going to be really deep this year. And so she gave me some of the thoughts that what they had to go through. And I think that, you know, she talked about the fact that, you know, you look to see how everybody plays in that first half. And then you go by who's playing well. You might give kids another chance. But, you know, if you've got a group that's playing well, you stick. Those kids still get the majority of the minutes. But the fact that they can get someone to come in and be really solid for them is going to help somewhere you can't play kids 39 40 minutes and really think that when you get to postseason you're going to be fresh and so that's what we're trying to you know our whole goal is doing this is making sure we're fresh but that's why we're also very intently talking to our kids about you got to take care of the ball you got to play defense and you got to work hard every possession and because if we're not doing those things you can't play because then you're not giving us anything out there. You can't go out there and coast. Nicole Martin now knows that she's got to work hard every day to keep because she's got a lot of competition right now. But that's also why she's in here at 8 in the morning usually getting shots up. Coach, with the depth you're talking about, where we I think we said we haven't had that before, um, most of it's upper class depth. Yes. Absolutely. I, I would totally agree with that. And I feel like that's that's kind of our commitment. We want to play a lot of kids. We feel like they're just going to get better and better. We focus on that. Regardless of what the wins and losses are, I think we're going to be there at the end. You know, and that's my true belief because I think we have a very talented team. But our talent shines when we play together. And that's what we're trying to get, a, a, you know, accomplished as a uh, basketball program is – uh, it's great to have individual talent, but we got to play really well together. We got to know who we want to get the ball to, you know. And you know, if certain kids come in, they got to be the best frickin' screener there is. You know, that's their job, and go rebound the ball, and then you take care of it. We can keep it pretty simple. Uh, then I think we'll be okay. With the, the new men's three point line on the floor, uh, have you noticed that your guards have started to drift a little bit? Yes. Like yeah, um, I would. We just talked about that uh, yesterday in practice because we all our kids think now that they're NBA three-point shooters and they're backed off of the men's line even. So we have to remind them of shooting percentages um, because they'd still shoot a better percentage at our line. And when we have to worry about being in behind the men's line, we'll, we'll worry about that. But um, you get too many lines on the floor, they'll get confused. So. Does that accidentally help your spacing on offense? <laughs> Yeah, anything can help our spacing. I'm all for it, so that's good. You mentioned confidence and uh, maturity and playing a couple times. Uh, sometimes last year the turnovers were kind of like unforced and you had trouble finishing in games. Is that maturity let will those things just kind of solve themselves? Well, I hope so. I mean, I think with our depth, you know, if someone's not taking care of the ball, you know, they absolutely understand why they're sitting next to me. Um, and, you know, playing time's huge with kids. I mean, that sometimes that's the best discipline you can have, you know. And like I said, it's 
sometimes it's hard to gauge at this time until you start playing. And uh, you know, I'm all I'm a coach that likes to give kids second, third chances. Um, so I'm never going to give up on them. But uh, when it comes down to crunch time, you're going to know who you want in the game. Talked about Silva using her length on defense. What else do you want to see your guards do to get after the other team's guards? You know, I, I would just say, um, you know, we've got to expose different people. Um, you know, McKenzie can score in a, a bunch of different ways. Us being able to set her up better, give her the ball in better positions for scoring. Um, but, you know, the thing with McKenzie that I'd like to see the most is obviously the defensive part, but just the rebounding part. You know, because she's a kid that when she gets the rebound, she can go. She can just get up and go. She doesn't have to wait for an outlet. She can just start our offense and our transition. And that's the thing that I think that she can help us the most in. Well, I think the biggest thing is just to apply pressure. We got to force tougher shots, uh, tougher catches. Uh, we've got to force them away from the three-point line and off the line. Um, you know, our rotations have got to be better, quicker, um, and forcing kids to make quicker decisions because our rotation is there. You know, too many times people got into the paint on us and they weren't challenged. That can't happen. You know, so those are some of the things our our uh, guards have to do is can't get beat so easily and then it's just forcing all those tougher catches tougher shots challenging passes and catches Any more questions? Playing this conference kind of helps challenge the team to play their best The conference season is that what you yeah. Absolutely I mean our conference is, is tough um, and like I said, it's going to be a lot tougher this year, I believe. So I think our kids are always excited for it, but we've got to take it one game at a time, and we can't, we can't underlook or overlook anybody. Some younger kids get registered here? Will you open up the season? Not yet. Not yet. That might be something we'd consider as we start moving forward, but right now there's not a plan to register anybody. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Very All right, much. thank you. Thanks for coming.